artists, these are the materials you're gonna need for your snow globe project. The rubric that was in your art kit along with the template and the small piece of construction paper. You'll also need the pad of paper that you were given in your larger art kit. There's gonna be a couple different options for how to add color. So I'd love for you to have some kind of watercolor set, water, paintbrush, paper towel available, as well as your oil pastels. Um, I have a kind of a cool blending option that you can do using oil. So if you had a little cup of vegetable oil or mineral oil and some Q-tips um, available, that might be nice too, and you can decide which technique you'd like to try. All right, let's get started. As noted in the project description, the goal of this project is to create a colorful winter snow globe featuring architectural drawings of buildings. And that is where you're gonna be really creative with the kinds of buildings that you might want to draw for this project. We're gonna begin by creating the sky background using watercolors or the oil pastel technique. There are some design sheets that I have included online for you to take a look at. These are resources that are available to you. Of course, you can use your own imagination to draw some buildings using your Sharpie. And then we're gonna be cutting it out, putting it all together as you see pictured here. Let's get your paper ready by cutting out the template. The next step is to put your base template on the paper that you were given, and it could have been a number of different colors. We're gonna trace this in pencil and cut it out. Now that I have my base cut out, I'm gonna set this aside for later, and I'm gonna trace the snow globe template here on my first piece, piece of paper that I have available. The first option for your sky background, this is gonna form the main circle area of your snow globe, is to use watercolor paints. I am going to be thinking specifically of using colors that are analogous. And if you think back to the learning that we did earlier this year, analogous colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. That is going to ensure that the paints that are next to each other blend smoothly. I'm also gonna consider the pattern that I want. One option might be to do something circular that might lead to a moon, or I could have the paints going across, kind of how the, the wind or sky would blow, or maybe even curves like a Van Gogh type wave across the top. Here's what my process looks like. As mentioned before, there's two options, watercolor being the first, and if you chose this, you're gonna just set it aside to dry, and then we'll cut it out and prepare um, this later for assembly with the rest of the pieces of the project. The second option uses the oil pastels that were in your art kit, along with some kind of oil, mineral oil, canola, vegetable, any type of oil, and Q-tips. For this version of the background, again, you're gonna think about analogous colors. And I'm kind of gravitating toward these cool colors um, along with white as a good option for a background. But if you wanted to do something that was more like, um, like a sunset or a sunrise, you could certainly get into some of those warmer colors as well. So for this project, I am going to add the color using the oil pastel, 
And you'll notice that I don't color it perfectly. And that's because I'm actually gonna use the oil to blend the oil pastel over the surface. It almost gives it an oil painting-like appearance. So let me show you what that process looks like and you could decide what you would like to try. As you can see from the two samples, the oil pastel does result in a more vibrant background, which might appeal to you, or you might uh, appreciate the, just the subtlety of the watercolor. That's totally up to you. Um, I actually think both options are really fun to try. So let's move on now to the next step. The next step in the project is to consider what kind of buildings or architecture that you'd like to have in your snow globe. I've created a couple of different resources that you can look at and you'll note here you can also come up with your own ideas um, or just out of your imagination. So one option is that you could create buildings in your snow globe that are holiday themed. So there's a couple of different sheets available that show you some gingerbread type houses that you could certainly draw in there. Um, another option that is not holiday related would be to consider doing a cityscape or a view of a favorite city. So I've included just some illustrations that are relatively simple that you could use as a reference. If you've been to any of these cities or you'd like to go to any of these cities, um, you'll see I also include in, included in here um, the Denver skyline, which of course would be familiar to all of us as an option. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm not exactly sure which idea I want to go with um, and I'm thinking you might feel the same way I'd like you to go ahead and sketch out a couple of ideas I'm using just this little tin you could use a mug or a lid or a bowl and I just like you to make two circle shapes and then go ahead and try a couple different options um, here in a smaller version for what you could possibly do on your art paper. Artists, this is what my particular sketching process turned out like. I tried both the gingerbread houses and a cityscape. I enjoyed different things about each of them. The gingerbread house uh, was kind of fun because I focused more on organic or freeform shapes and I applied what we have learned about creating the illusion of space by using a foreground, middle ground, and background. I also enjoyed doing a more structured cityscape. I found that a ruler was a very helpful tool for getting those really clean vertical lines the best I could. Uh, while this one was more imaginative, I also enjoyed thinking about particular memories that I had of being downtown with my family. So I'd like you to go ahead and try some different ideas and then we'll move on to our next step. Artists, we're ready to go on to the final paper uh, with our building designs. You are gonna take another piece of paper from your art pad, trace the snow globe template on there, and then you're gonna decide what you'd like your process to look like. You are welcome if it makes you feel more comfortable to do your architectural drawing in pencil first, lightly, and then go over in Sharpie. If you're comfortable, you can jump right into the Sharpie. You, you can also decide which thickness of Sharpie that you feel would be best. 
Um, as I'm looking here at my city design, I definitely think a thin Sharpie would be preferable. I think with my gingerbread house, either one would be fine. So let's move on to that step. Artists, the next step is to add color. Considering the detail of this architectural drawing, I am leaning toward colored pencils or watercolors. Um, oil pastels might be a possibility with a gingerbread house or a less detailed drawing, so I'm gonna leave that up to you. I'm going to do is to cut out this circle. Because I want for the background of the snow globe to show, I'm also going to carefully cut along the horizon line so that this can be placed on the background. Now your horizon line may be lower and that actually might be better so that more of the background shows, but wherever it falls is just fine. This watercolor one is a little more subtle and I'm thinking because the rest of this is watercolored, I do like the look of the watercolored background. So now I'm gonna cut that out and show you how to put it all together. Once you have your cityscape cut, you're gonna consider which direction it should go on your background. You can see, I think this makes sense more than it would if these lines are going up and down. So I could kind of do it this way or perhaps the other direction. And then once that is glued and held in place, I'm also going to attach this base. And I'll just place it right there and give you some options for finishing touches. Because we are creating a snow globe, um, this might be a fun opportunity to use a little bit of glitter to create a snowy effect. Of course, this is not um, a necessary step, but if you're working with me, I'll definitely have these available. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit to give it a shimmer. Here is my finished city snow globe uh, with the sparkly snow in the sky. If you like that effect, but you don't have glitter at home, another idea would be to apply the glue and sprinkle salt on the top of your art. Well, I am excited to see what magical thing will make an appearance in your snow globe. Happy creating.